CZ, welcome to In Conversation. Oh, thanks for having me. Isn't there an inherent contradiction between wanting to be regulated and what cryptocurrency is all about, and that is decentralization and being anonymous? Um, I don't think there's any uh, contradictions at all, to be honest. Um, many people take an extreme view. You're either decentralized or centralized. You're either regulated or not regulated. Um, I think we, in the real world, we live in a balanced, uh, there's always balances to be, to be, to be made. Um, I think we are more than happy, we you can happily provide access to crypto by being running a centralized exchange and being, when you run a centralized business, um, it makes sense for you to be regulated with dealing with money. And uh, being regulated actually, number one, do protect consumers. And if the right regulations um, are adopted, then you can still encourage innovation and it allows us to integrate with the traditional financial uh, systems. Well, if we look though, the regulators of all the major financial hubs in the world are pretty wary of what's happening with Binance. They've been saying no to you or you have yourself withdrawn your applications. So why is that? Why is it you haven't been able to convince the regulators of the big financial centers that Binance is a good idea? Uh, I wouldn't agree with that statement uh, or, or the way <laughs> um, that's phrased. Um, I think we are uh, seeing many uh, uh, very influential governments that wants to work with, the, with us specifically. Um, I think some of the smarter governments do realize this is the future technology of finance. Of finance. And having a strong uh, fintech sector is the base layer of every other sector. If you don't have a solid financial sector as a foundation, then you won't, like, none of your other sectors will be competitive because you don't have the right means to, to transact. Um, so um, we're actually seeing many governments are, I would even go as far as saying we have uh, some governments are competing for, uh, for to work with us. Um, there, there are governments that are competing to attract us to establish the headquarters in their countries. Um, I wouldn't name them specifically, but um, they are top uh, G7 countries, G20 countries. Uh, we have recently got a, uh, a approval from Bahrain and we publicly announced that we have a, uh, a, um, a collaboration with the Dubai government as well. Um, and there are others to come. So uh, I don't want to announce them ahead of time, but uh, uh, in, a, in, in a few weeks, months, you will see that there's many more governments that, that realize they, they want to attract this industry. So Bahrain? Dubai, absolutely. But what about the conventional big hubs like New York or London or Frankfurt or Singapore? What was uh, so, the problem? What is it that, that was the major stumbling block that prevented you from actually getting on, from, from being approved? So, um, for example, uh, Binance US uh, has 43 state licenses in the US. Um, New York has, has a bid license um, uh, uh, program, and that program requires you, requires you to have three years of audited financials. Binance US is only two years old. So um, uh, there are some, you know, this is where a regulation is made in such a way that it prevents a two-year-old company from getting it. Um, in other regions you mentioned, in UK, we uh, did uh, withdraw our application earlier this year, but we have changed that decision and we're working with the regulators there. Uh, Singapore is a small market. It, it is a very important market. We continue to work, to work with the governments there. And, uh, but um, not every government has fully established regulations for crypto, to be honest. 
Uh, and most of the regulations in crypto space, even today, is only looking at a very small part of the, of the uh, spectrum. They only look at the centralized exchanges. They're not looking at DeFi. They're not, look, not looking at NFTs, sports fan tokens, um, many other things. And in the centralized exchange space, they're mostly just focused on the KYC AML part, which is important. But for a cryptocurrency exchange to flourish and to be run properly, there are other things like security, wallet management. Um, how do you handle customer disputes? Um, what kind of listing framework do you have? Uh, very few regulations talk about that. Most of the re existing regulations in especially established countries today, they typically just borrow from the uh, uh, existing bank uh, sectors and they don't deal with the crypto specific sectors that, uh, that much. So we're, no, we're working with, uh, with governments all around the world and we're trying to help uh, work to the extent we can to either educate or share our best practices for them to understand this whole industry. Um, but some of the, uh, actually the bigger the government, the more slower they move. And um, we've seen that smaller governments actually typically move faster. Um, but now some of the world's largest governments are looking at this space. Um, and in those governments, um, you typically do see two groups of people one group would be very pro crypto. They understand the, the the they understand the negative impact of not having this technology or not having this industry uh, develop in their country. Um, there are other people who are more conservative who typically will, will have a, a more reserved view about crypto. Um, they read about news, um, in, inaccurate or not, about you know Bitcoin still being used by drug lords and stuff like that. So you always have different views um, and. Uh, um, I'm, we're not saying that everyone in the world today has the best crypto regulations already. The regulatory landscape for this industry is just beginning. So uh, we typically spend more time in the places where the uh, government have a much more uh, forward thinking uh, and favorable view towards this industry, obviously. Some of the things that you've just been talking about because of course for persons who may not know that much about crypto that's what you know is people often read about as you say it's used by terrorists it's used by scammers um, it's for money laundering so how do you think that regulators can actually put something in place uh, and how do you think that you would be able to accommodate that so that we don't have it used by terrorists or scammers or money launderers I recently read a report, which is forwarded to me by an ambassador of a country, and that in the it was a very detailed report. In the report, it says uh, less than three percent of the Bitcoin transactions are associated with illicit activities or questionable activities. So that's a very very small number, and it's actually a smaller percentage number than fiat currencies, than U.S. dollars or other currencies. Normal currencies, so, yes. Uh, I personally believe many people don't understand the numbers and they look at one thing and they take an anecdotal view. The news media no longer says this Bitcoin is only used by terrorists, etc. That was the case like five, six years ago, even though that wasn't true at the time either. So there are industry reports which clearly show that that's not the case. Um, but, you know, the, uh, there are people who, who hold that view. That, uh, we have data that shows that that view is most likely incorrect. There are many real use cases for crypto that if you miss out on them, the whole economy may suffer. Using crypto, you can fundraise for your projects globally. Uh, so today, if you have a good project and if you have some credibility and you're, you're serious about your project and, and people know about you, you can easily raise money for your, for your project. It can be called ICOs, IEOs, IDOs, et cetera. It's much, much easier to raise money on using, using, using crypto. Uh, you can raise, raise money from people all around the world very quickly, a few million dollars, and then you can fund your project. If you're serious, you have some reputation. It could be much easier than going through traditional VC routes. Um, so this is a use case now. It, in fact, it was because it was so, it's so easy, you get a lot of scammers. But for real entrepreneurs, this is a, this is a tool that they can use. And look at NFTs. NFTs is another way for uh, artists to monetize their work globally. Again, uh, again with NFTs, if you don't use the blockchain, there's no other similar mechanism in the traditional space. Uh, if you go through art galleries, museums, you don't get that kind of liquidity and you don't get that kind of payoff. 
You, you don't think that crowdfunding in its conventional way on some of the platforms would be the same? It's not the same. You can try it. You know, uh, if you use a if you use a conventional crowdsourcing platform, you're typically limited to one country. Uh, it's very difficult for users from other countries to buy your work, to participate, etc., because of the limitations in the fiat current system. So, uh, and there's really no reason people couldn't give you $200 if they want to uh, support your project. What is that one thing that is that that stumbling block for making Binance global? Um, I think the one thing that that would be really really bad is any 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 blanket ban on crypto on Bitcoin on exchanges. Uh, that's generally bad. Um, that usually have, uh, in my opinion, will have uh, long lasting um, negative impacts to economic growth in those regions. This is a new technology. So we um, there are uh, people using this for uh, nefarious activities, and that's a very small percentage. It's actually smaller than uh, people doing that in fiat, much much smaller. And there's many benefits of uh, of embracing this technology. Um, no one can stop technology innovation. Um, we, of, uh, there's billions of people in the world, and they will continue to innovate. And uh, embracing innovation is really, really important for economic uh, development. So uh, any blanket ban is usually bad. So the damage, you say, is actually the risk is much, much smaller and overrated than the benefits. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, think, I think in any, in any industry, there's risks. Today, people still use U.S. dollars for, um, buy, to buy drugs and stuff like that. It doesn't mean that U.S. dollar is bad. Terrorists still have bank accounts uh, somewhere. Uh, that doesn't mean banks are bad. So we need to we need to differentiate bad people using a technology for for their own bad purposes versus the entire benefits of the technology offers. Uh, I'm sure terrorists use internets, um, and we don't shut down the entire internet for that. So um, yeah, so I think we we got to separate those things and look at the this, the benefits of like. 99, 100x or 1,000x more than what the, uh, with some of the issues that we, we do need to fight the bad players and reduce the issues and we need to address the issues, but the benefits are so much larger. Yeah, I hear you. We did a recent interview in which uh, one economist argued that actually it would make things much, much cheaper for migrant workers when transferring money home, which tends to be very, very small amounts, if they use crypto. Um, it, because it reduces so many of the frictions, uh, uh, costs, and, and that way very small amounts can be transferred. Absolutely. So yeah, the, the global remittances is a huge industry and the cost today associated with using those services are typically 10, 20 percent. Uh, if you're a worker and they would typically see workers wire like $300 back to their home for, to support their families. And they get charged like $20, $30 for that transfer out of $200, $300. And these are not very rich people, right? These are, these are people who work hard for their money and they have to support their families and they have to pay 10% or 20% in that just, just for transferring money. Uh, with cryptocurrencies, you can, you can now achieve that and with a fraction, like with a few pennies or even less. If I was a small company and I was thinking and saying, hey, how can I reduce my costs of all these payments that I make? Would crypto be something I should consider and why? Oh, absolutely. I think that today the world is much smaller. We work with people all, across, all around the world. You don't work with people only in your country. When you talk about cross-border border payments, um, the traditional fiat currency systems are typically very expensive and very slow. Um, so with cryptocurrencies, you know, it's, it's instant and it's very low cost. This will make the friction of you working internationally much less, which will make you much more competitive internationally. So uh, any business that doesn't use this will typically put themselves at a significant disadvantage. I've just spoken to someone who invests in crypto over Binance, and he tells me that he sees it as gambling. So I think we should adopt a, uh, a view that there are different users, uh, that uh, there are different people with different purposes in cryptocurrencies as in any other currency. You know, in US dollars, there are traders who trade stocks. 
and they are, they, are, they are currency traders who trade US dollars versus euros versus RMB. Um, there are people who just you know, US, use US dollars as a form of payment. And uh, so in any industry, there's always a small group of people who are speculative, who are traders, and they buy and sell uh, either very, uh, they're short-term traders, they're long-term traders. And those guys uh, speculate, they can they use different words. Some people call it a bet, some people call it investments. Um, and depending on what you want to do, and some people just use Bitcoin for payments. Um, for myself, I never trade. Uh, I just I hold Bitcoin that I had from 2014. So um, do you call that a bet or not? Um, that depends on your definition. But uh, in every industry, there are different people using this tech new technology, new asset type for uh, for different things. What about uh, if we liken it to uh, stock exchanges? In stock exchanges, though, there have been uh, there's been a real push towards more knowledge from uh, people investing and also that banks when they give advice and so on also need to check that the investor is aware of the risk. Do you think that that should also be the case for crypto exchanges? I absolutely agree. So um, I think more education in the industry is really, really important. For that reason, we have Binance Academy, which is a, a pure free online uh, with videos, articles, with a few hundred, like close to a thousand um, uh, videos and, and articles that we created completely free for people to view. And we actually put those articles in uh, links into different parts of the site. For example, when you make a deposit, like what are the security risks you got to be careful? So that those those things are embedded into our, into our platform. Recently, the uh, Portuguese government actually moved our uh, Binance Academy on content onto their website for digital education. So they're using our content with our permission, of course, uh, on their website. We are also probably the only crypto exchange that has a responsible trading program, where if we uh, if we see you lose money very we see a user lose money quickly, we actually prevent them from trading for forty eight hours, and we let them cool down. If they still continue and then they still lose money, we actually forbid them from trading. So and uh, before entering some of the uh, product areas, people have to take some really explicit quizzes where we ask them like uh, inv investment questions that are very explicit, and they have to choose the right answers to get to get in. Well, if you're going to stop people from trading when they actually lose too much, won't that actually mean they'll just move over to some other exchange that where they, they aren't so careful? Uh, possibly, but you know, as you said, um, uh, this is this is it's a balance. So uh, we try to do the maximum to educate our users. Why not then get together with an existing? stock exchange. I mean, after all, you come from a background of computer science, but you were also at the Tokyo Stock Exchange. You know conventional stock exchanges. Why not connect with them and then, so to say, come mainstream that way? Wouldn't that also get over a lot of the regulation problems? I think working with them, definitely a good idea. But I wouldn't say that just by working with them, you'll get over the uh, uh, regulatory problems. It's not like they're the regulators. It's, you know, and the uh, regulations about crypto is not 100% clear, to be honest, in most places in the world, even today. We, we do not rule out that, that possibility, but um, uh, I wouldn't say just by just by working with NASDAQ, you automatically mm, uh, have no regulatory uh, concerns. Uh, that I think that's not the case. So, But we are very open to working with uh, traditional players. You're not afraid of them eating your lunch, as the expression goes. No. Um, so I think the more players that come in, the more people who come into crypto, the better it is for everybody who's already in crypto today. So it is very important for us to grow the industry. The market is so young, so early. We can grow it by 1,000x, 10,000x. The more players that come in, the more opportunities it actually creates in the industry. Uh, if, we, if, if you're the only person using crypto, then you're in the wrong industry. If everyone's using crypto now, which is the case, um, uh, the industry grows bigger and there will be more opportunities in this industry. I fully believe that uh, decentralized exchanges was one day replace centralized exchanges. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm looking forward for that to happen. When that happens, we can work on decentralized exchanges too. Um, so we can embrace that technology. So we embrace everybody coming in. We embrace in technology innovation. We embrace competition partnerships, we embrace all of that. Could we see Binance getting approval in London or Frankfurt or in Singapore in, let's say, three to six months? It's not game over yet? Yeah, three to six months is a very short time period, to, to be honest. Like, uh, 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 regul regulations don't change that fast uh, and they don't move that fast. But I, I would say in the long, long term, we, we, we aspire to be everywhere uh, in a fully compliant man manner. So, um, um, yeah, so just, just because we short term um, is not in a country. And in fact, we're not, we're not in most countries today. 
Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that we, we won't be there in the future. I, I foresee a future, you know, five, 10, 20 years from now, crypto will be everywhere and Binance should be everywhere as well. What about places like India, where some of them have said, I mean, Prime Minister Modi himself has said that it spoils the youth. How do you change a mindset like that? I don't think we need to change mindsets of everyone. Um, there's 8 billion people in the world. Everybody thinks differently and they have the freedom to do so. Um, I think we only need to service crypto to be the people who want crypto. Um, I personally view this as the uh, most impactful technology for our financial and then industry economic growth. And so that's why I'm spending all my time uh, in this industry. I fully believe the younger generations who grow up will be crypto natives. But if another person doesn't hold that view, they don't have to spend that time in the industry and they may have an impact on the industry, at least on the industry speed of growth. For people in key decision uh, 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 positions, their views will impact the growth of the industry and the growth of the economy and other people's lives. Um, I do uh, really hope that those people can look at economy development as a primary driver and to better people's lives. Um, to further grow the economy in, in, in the places they are in charge of. We're seeing like more and more people coming into this industry at a phenomenal pace. Um, I think the crypto users probably grew by somewhere between three to 500% just this, you know, this last year alone. So uh, the industry is growing, but we don't need to get everybody. But you are tiny compared to mainstream uh, you know, exchanges still. Uh, relatively speaking, you're talking billions, well, mainstream uh, exchanges will be at trillions. So. Can you really compare? It's just that the growth is, you know, incredible. The numbers are just incredible over at crypto. But in terms of actual volume, it's not that large. We are still at the beginning stages of this industry. So that's why we're small. I think globally, I would estimate we're around 5% adoption uh, in terms of uh, somebody who has some kind of crypto. And if we talk about total net worth, we're probably, we're probably at 0.1% adoption rate. Um, so uh, very few people put all of their uh, net worth into crypto. And we don't need to get to 100. We can we grow from 5% to 10, to 20, to 80. And then probably we'll, the last 20% probably will take a, a, couple, a couple of decades uh, because, you know, uh, my mom probably will not be a heavy crypto user because of her age. And her, like she doesn't even know how to use the iPhone that well. Uh, we are definitely early. And uh, so we, we're smaller. That's fine. But I think the trend is very clear. The, uh, the number of users in crypto is growing and is not stopping. And that's important for us. CZ, thank you very much for being on In Conversation. Thank you so much for having me, Cheers.